Wine Library TV, I am your host, me, <laughs> Gary Vay, Nur, Chuck, and this, my friends, is The Thunder Show, aka the internet's most passionate beer program. That's right, Alec is back in the house. What episode were you on last time? 235, I think. Wow. Yeah, it was a long October. time ago. Yeah, right, right, we did the pumpkin stuff. Was it last Halloween? Yeah. We, we, wait, it can't be 235 then. We haven't done 250 shows in, in 10 months. We were in the 300s, I think. Yeah. Had to be. No, it was 200 and something. No, we only pang out like, anyway. Hey, we were really, nice. really pumped. Before I do anything, big shout out to UCLA. I promised one of my Ustream peeps I'd give a shout out to UCLA. I'm doing it. Doesn't mean I don't like UCSC. Actually, I could care less about UCLA. Yeah, I said it. But you know, the bottom line is we are here and we're doing a Lambic show. I'm excited about this. Uh, of all the beers that I've had in the world, these are ones that always hit my palate correct. I mean, Alec is gonna do his beer thing um, and break it down. I see there's food here, which I'm excited about. I'm still rocking t-shirts if you send it. A little awkward today because I see there's some bacon here. I apologize to vegan.com people who sent this to me. I didn't know which show I would do it with. I put it on, I come out here, Alec was, I'm like, oh yeah, the beer show, kind of weird, apologize. But Alec, Take center stage, talk, do your thing. All right. Well, thank you for having me again here, Gary. You're welcome. Uh, I'd like to take one second to give an apology to the CKCs. Last time I was on here, 200 and 300 and whatever, I said you guys weren't going to be able to handle the Rauch beer. Apparently, many of you have approached me and said, you know what, Alec? I liked the Rauch beer. I loved it. I've had it every day. Don't sleep I think on practice. the CKCs. So I want to apologize. Apparently, you can handle it. Of course they can. My the, CKC the CKCs can handle Everclear. True. All right, let's move on. All right, Lambics and a wild beer. These are, uh, the Lambics are from a town called Lembeck. They're in Belgium. They're made with uh, the airborne yeast. It's spontaneous yeast cultures. We're going to start off today with the Cantillon Classic Goose. This Goose is a blend of one, two, and three-year-old beers. Tell the uh, is... maniacs what Goose means, if you know. What I is don't goose? actually okay. know what Goose so means. Classic goose. Blenders it. So we have to figure that part out. One and two and three-year-old Lambics blended together. Yes. Okay, very nice. Um, and they blend them together because it takes away a little bit of the sour and the tartness. I mean, you expect this to be a sour, funky beer. And Why? Because it's it's fermented with uh, Brettomyces, Petiococcus, Lactobacillus, and all sorts of other airborne yeast cultures that you would never want in your wine, or in the case of Brett, small, small, small amounts, but you would never want the quantity you see here. Understood. In this beer. Okay. But it's what makes them fun. It what, it's what makes them refreshing. It's now, what makes this, them... I, I recall this is from Jean Van Moore, right? Uh, Roy, right? Jean Van Mo Roy, yes. yes. The master uh, brewer. Yes. Great color. Just gorgeous, Mott. Let's pour a little bit for all the homies that aren't here with us anymore. I like that. Got a little bit on Mott, which I always appreciate. <laughs> nice little foaminess on the oh, yeah. on the top. There's great lacing here. There's always a decent head with these beers. I, I um, like head and beer. Yeah, head is yes. head and beer is good. You know, as I said last time, we're always looking for good head. Oh, this is great. And uh, I love this nose. Yeah, just lots of nice Brett inspired. Very farty. Yeah, very funky, very barnyardy. Very funky. I mean, this smells like the dirtiest cheese I've ever come across, mm -hmm. which I appreciate. I mean, this is like, you know, like real good solid like toe cheese. Yeah. This is this is extreme funk, it's and not, not like smart. number one Benmini Road funk, not like oh, no. funk. No, this is like old champagne funk. Yes, it is like this old is champagne. like I agree with you. Toe jam. This is like toe yeah, jam, right? Toe jam. I, I had it's it. sweaty. It's leathery. It's it's all sorts of good funky funkness in the nose. You know what it really smells like? It smells like very old stinky stinky leather, right? That right. that's what I get. Like an yeah. old right. Wet leather. Like wet boots that have been like you're like you go to garage sales as much as I have, yeah. and you get like you buy boots for like a buck and you sell them for five on eBay and you're pumped about it, and you buy them from like the 30s. Yeah. That's what this smells like when it was never cleaned. Yeah, my okay. watch. It smells like cheese too. It smells like my watch. Bag. It does yeah. smell oh like yeah, cheese, no. You know? And that's why these are these are. Now I noticed you brought out food, cheese. which is great because I promised food in 2008. This is my second <laughs> time. It's August <laughs> goddamn 11, and I'm having you know, gosh darn um, it. Well, yeah, and that's because uh, these beers really shine mostly when you have food in front of you. I wouldn't want to just sit down and have, say, the St. Lambinus by itself. Not only because that's not the intention of the brewer, but also because, frankly, you lose something. All right, let's they, give this a whirl. So, I'm going to start off by having some bacon. Me too. Because I can't have cheese. Delightful bacon. Mm -hmm. I scored a bacon in 98, which is usually what I score bacon. Hmm. Most perfect food. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people are down bacon. We're not here to make any political statements. 
go crazy. Um, in the Vayner Nation, we respect everybody's thoughts about foods and society and politics. Argyle. and Except for sports. As a matter of <laughs> fact, Mott, I need you to take all the IP addresses of all the dirty Patriot fans out there and let's end the episode for anybody based in Massachusetts right now. Awesome. All right, now that they're gone, let's move on. Let's try this. Let's give it a whirl. I also get a citrus component yeah. coming through now. Do you get a little bit of the orange? I get a little orange yeah, lemon Yeah, a little thing, lemon right? juice. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's and especially I get lemon juice on the palate. because. I get no. outrageous amounts of lemon lime. Yeah. Serious. This is like a sour problem. Sprite. Which is why hot summer days, great beers. Match it, sit down, have a nice mussels pot, maybe a cream sauce. You say pot? Like weed? No, mussels pot. Like oh, that. okay, got it. I'm like, whoa. Alex. It's not that, no. kind, There's of certain kind, it's of not that kind of show, yeah. Got it. Discovered right. that last time. Um, yeah. This rocks, us, it rocks in at about 18 bones for the half bottle. Pricey beer. Yeah, pricey beer, but this is this is a fairly labor And this is made out of, for all the people who don't know? Mostly, mostly wheat. Yeah. It's a mostly it's it's seventy percent malted wheat mm -hmm. and then thirty percent unmalted wheat. You usually don't see too much unmalted grain in beer. If you're a fan of acidity and lemons, for that matter, I mean this is like really outrageously lemon limey. Um, if you're a fan of acidity, you know rieslings and and mm -hmm. you know Gruner Veltliners and things of that nature, yeah. I could see this really striking Guilty. your palate. Yeah, I'm a big Austrian German nut, and this is one of my favorite styles of beer. It's nice, it's crisp, it's refreshing, it's very food friendly, it's easily paired to millions of different things. Oh, I like that a lot. And, yeah, Cantillon Did we is... rate beer last time? We did not rate beer. No, we didn't rate it, Mott, did we? No. Okay, let's move on. Yeah, it's like a 92 point. All right. All right. <laughs> now, this next one is also from Cantillon. Uh, this is the St. Lambinus. This is a grape-based fruit lambic. You take goose, you add fruit to it during one of the fermentations, either the second or, in this case, I believe, the third, and you end up with... Yes. Yes. Now, we see a lot of lambics induced with fruit, right? Mm-hmm. That's what I mean, they're most commonly known for. That's what I've had stuff. mostly. That's why that first one kind of threw me off a little bit. Yeah. This is red grapes. I don't know, unfortunately, what kind, because they don't tell me, and I can't read Flanders' is to find well, out. It, so if somebody it looks knows... Like, it looks like um, Mouved. Yeah. <laughs> Visually. And... How much is this? This is now 50 bones. This is from 2005. This is actually, I've had this since since five days before I started working here. Ironic. Uh, this was $30 when I, uh, 30, $35 when I bought it, and now it's 50 because the dollar crap. The mm. um, you'll notice, How much was this bacon when you first got it? This was free. It's a sample from the lovely people at GourmetLibrary.com. No. Sign up for GourmetLibrary.com now. Shh, we're not talking about that yet. All right, let's give it a snippy <laughs> sniff. I never thought we'd be breaking Gourmet Library <laughs> on the Wine Library TV like that. But good job. That's super fine. It's super close. I would have wow. figured sometime that... Uh... We were supposed to be ready in March, so... Yeah, anyway, I figured when you did the uh, this wine... This is good. Club. Yeah. A little bit grapier in the nose. Much more. A little more. bit winier, as you Absolutely. might expect. Absolutely. Um, Great color. I mean, just fantastic yeah, color. Almost like a... Like a... A bloody goose. <laughs> wow. Um... Is that what, Rocky is that like what, you know, is, like, is bloody goose, like when Rocky gets cut? Cut me, Mick, we got some <laughs> bloody goose, Rock. All right, this really has a very gorgeous cassis slash grape candy component on the nose. Also a little bit like a, a raspberry mm -hmm. juice coming through a little bit. The raspberry juice is gorgeous. And there's a little bit, I got a little bit of like a wood smoke thing in the background, but it's really faint. That might just be the bacon. The acid is amazing in these ones. Mm -hmm. Big complexity, really nice bitterness on the back end. I mean, if you like tartness or acid, these beers are for you. Yeah. And what I like about this is how clean they tend to finish. Once the finish is gone, once you've gotten through that sourness, they're just... I mean, you know, this probably calls for some cheese. Yeah. This is definitely... You're not allowed cheese, right? I'm not allowed cheese. Why is that again? It makes me puke. That's probably, probably a... not a good not a good wine library TV moment to have. I am not so <laughs> like woohoo <laughs> Yeah, I don't want to end up on best week ever for that though. Mmm. Have some cheese. <laughs> <laughs> the 
really interesting. You get into really creamy cheese. This is, is a triple cream, which I'm down for all the time. Coats the palate, takes away a little bit of the acid from the lambic and really mellows it out. Makes it a smooth beverage with a lot of complexities. I get a lot of red flowers, almost like lilac component yeah. on the mid palate. Love the berry thing going on. Raspberry blueberries are really what's dominating this for me. Again, very fascinating the complexities that a beer like this can bring to the table. Definitely a wine drinker's type of yeah. beer and probably for somebody that really enjoys bubbles. I mean, to me, as a big champagne head, this is why I've always been drawn to these. Yeah, this is this is why, this is what got me into them too, was my love of champagne, my love of acidity, my, you know, German wines, Austrian wines, especially Austrian wines. There's so much that these beers share in common with them, both in terms of their flavor profiles and just the, 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 clean, the cleanliness, the acidity, the freshness, and the fact that they actually age very well because of the acidity. Usually the rule of thumb for aging anything is 8% alcohol and above. Maybe we but these are actually a little bit below, but they have so much acidity, they actually hold for very long periods of time. How long can they last? I've heard of decades plus. I mean, I, I've, I've spoken to people who've had, you know, 20-year-old fuses. Um, in terms of St. Lambinus, I couldn't tell you, because I only know of people who've had it five and six years old. But not to say there probably isn't somebody out there who's like, yeah, I had it like 20 years ago. Beautiful beers. Highly age-worthy. And of, the, now, of the two, which one do you like the best? So far. The first one, right? Yeah. Me too. It, I like just, I like goose, straight goose, even more so than any of the fruits because so of how, and yeah, and how, just how clean, how just crisp and refreshing they can be. Let's move on. All right. This next beer the, is from the Russian River Brewing Company of Santa yep. Rosa, California. Like Russian River where the Pinots and the Shards mm -hmm. come from? Very nice. The, the brewmaster here was actually originally what's a, a winemaker. What is this? This is Supplication. 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 That sounds like something like you do. Uh, kinda. But I mean like, you know, like, naughty. Um, no. Oh, okay. It's the opposite of that. Really? It's like nice? Yeah, it's a, it's a, <laughs> Russian River Brewing Company tends to do supplication, damnation, temptation. They do Catholic saint sainthood related things. I see. Things. Did I just, and in this case, part of it'd the be demo? to humbly, to ask for humbly or earnestly as by praying, or to make a humble entreaty to or beseech. Anywho, brewmaster here, former winemaker got into brewing beer because he realized it took him two years to make wine and it takes a couple of months to make beer. Um, this is a... So a non-patient man. Exactly. This is a brown ale aged in oak barrels that have been treated with all of the bugs that made up the goose and the St. Lambinus and make up all of the all of the Lambics of Belgium. But it's not spontaneously fermented. It is fermented intentionally with, with uh, inoculated versions of these yeasts. Got it. And so... It'll have some of the same characteristics, but it's not as wild, it's not as variable, more consistent batch to batch. And I put this on for two reasons. One, I really love Russian Rivers beers. They're great. They're fantastic examples of bug beers. He probably makes some of the best bug beers along with Rob Todd of Allagash. Um, on which, I, which I've had. Yeah. And he's doing, Rob Todd, Allagash, doing a spontaneously fermented, their own Lambic coming out next year. Be on the lookout. I also put this on because ha ha, I have Russian River and it's really hard to get. Ha 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 ha. They don't like tattletales where you point. They're going to want to beat you up again. You just made the same thing you did with the CKZ <laughs> thing. <laughs> All right, let's give it a sniffy sniff. No, hoppier in the nose. Much hoppier. This is more classic yeah. beer-like on the nose. And that's because the hops here are fresher hops. They're dried hops. In, in Lambics, they tend to use aged hops. Basically, things that have lost all the hop character but retain the uh, antibacterial properties sure. that they have. Um, so you don't really taste hops and lambics. You definitely got more of the hops in the nose. There's more of a grassy. This is here. much more up the alley of the normal beers that you come across if you're a beer drinker, whereas the last two were clearly not. Um, so, you know, much darker color. You got that golden brownish orange thing going on. Beautiful nose. Again, I do get a, reminds me, it has an orange peel component. Again, I get, um, a little barkiness this time, a little woody yeah. kind of action. Not like classic, not like oak or anything, but... Yeah. God, this, the, the orange peel is heavy. Yeah, it's heavy on the orange peel, which is kind of odd because it's cherry. It's, it's a brown weird, ale. Right? Yeah, it's a brown ale where they throw cherries into the mix. If this was a Lambic, it would be a Creac. I don't really get cherries on the nose, do you? Not at all. None. Let's give it a whirl. Again, 
the thing you're gonna take away from Lambics when you go out and try one is if you're into lemons and limes, buy them. I mean, the acidity is absurd. Yeah, I love it. I mean, you. I mean, my my uh, my Brita in my fridge right now always has lemons in it. If Lizzie doesn't put lemons in it, it's like, no, just kidding. But it's like it's like serious. Lizzie beats me up. Anyway, you know, it's very much like lemons are my thing in my water. Um, in your Coke. In my coat, you've seen. I mean, it's, yeah. I put lemons in everything. In my bath. Anyway, um, I'm, I'm into this. What about you? I'm definitely into this. Um, this is one of my favorite breweries, and I'm really, really, really sad that we can't get this in New Jersey. Uh, but they have limited distribution, I understand. Uh, right. But I love this. I love the acidity. I love the... Lizzie, I love you. That was so uncalled for. I'm so sorry. Keep going. Yeah. I, love the, uh, I love the fact that this has great head. The other ones have had good head. This has lots of lacing. That's what sticks behind after you've got the head going. And Who gives a shit about the lacing? Anybody? Beer nuts. Yeah. That's like legs with wine. Mm-hmm. Huge complexities. Um, I do get, you know, I'm getting a little faintness of the cherries now all of a sudden mm-hmm. for some reason. I don't know why. There's a bit more cherry on the palate than there ever was in the nose. Lots this of is, orange zesty. This is like a blend of like a brown ale and a lambic, right? Like like if I really just took this and a brown ale and just like poured them in, maybe a little, like 60-40, that's what this would taste like. And the base for this is a brune, a Belgian brown. Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay. That's, the, that's, a, that's a good call. Way Thank to go. you. Appreciate it. That's what I do. That's how I roll. Mm-hmm. I like this. I like yeah. this a lot. How much is this? This is, ooh, if I remember correctly, I got this for 14 bucks at the brewery. This is the third batch. Got it. They should have some. If you live in Northern California and you're Get in the neighborhood of Santa Rosa, it's downtown Santa Rosa, you got to check this place out. They're amazing. I'm going to tell you right now, just for kicks and giggles, I'm 93, I'm 89, and I'm 92 on that. Hmm. And I might like this even better than this. i got to think about that for a second. But anyway, just for right. kicks and giggles. And now the one everybody knows. Probably the yep. first one I ever had. Yeah. This is a Frambois. From Lindemans. Lindemans is probably the best known Lambic brewer. Uh, and this one Are is. Are they commercial made, in a way? In the Lambic world? In a world? sense, yeah. They're, is, this they're a Santa, is this a Santa Margarita of Lambics in a weird, weird way? Or is it no, just. Is it too high quality? They're two, they're two different things. Um, is this like the Camus? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's known. You want to diss on it, but you got to admit that it's good quality. I don't even want to diss on it because they just do a different style. Whereas Cantillon doesn't do fruit syrups, everything's fresh fruit. And everything's fairly local right. for the most part. These guys do fruit syrups. They have a sweeter beer in God. the end. Um, oh God, it's not this... really it's not really a bad thing. This it's just like the heaven. different style. Yeah, and this is a lot more heaven. straight fruit up in the nose. I mean, this, this is lots of. I mean, this is heavenly. This is lots and lots of sweet berry fruit in the nose. You want to drink it, Mott? And it's yeah. a lot less sour. Mott, look at Mott. He's dancing. Mott, you're dancing. It's crazy. Oh, well, yeah, Mott's Mott. grabbing a glass because I even told Mott this was going to be the one he was going to like. There you go, monster. Mott wants to get hosed too. Yeah. Wow, this has got a gorgeous raspberry uh, nose, huh? Yeah. And like I said, they're just a different style. They're a sweeter style. They're less sour. They're less funk. They show off a little bit less of their actual yeast cultures and a lot more of the malty backbone. They're great beers, though. It's candy. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is candy. You know what this is? This is that cough met syrup. That, that cough on uh, Linda Mins or... Is it from the same company? No. Lindemans? I'm serious. Yeah. You remember Ludens. this? Oh, Ludens, you're right. That's what this yeah. is. Yeah. Just this in is... just in beverage form. Yeah. New Ludens for kids, just in beverage form. I mean, it's almost like that. Yeah, this is, this is. I mean, this is, it, this would be, uh, I hate to put it in the sense, if this was wine, this would be kind of like the Moscato to Asti of wine. Sure. In the sense that it's really it's easy to drink, it's sweet, it's fruity, and it goes with lots Triple of Triple cream, <laughs> cheese, on bacon. This is like... Something I can never have again after this moment. <laughs> I'm going for the chocolate. Because the raspberry and the chocolate are going to be a good match. I mean, this is, sh- honestly, this is a dessert. For a lot of people that are looking to get their friends into beers, this might be a great entry. It's got the sweetness. This is almost like a German Riesling that way. It's a great entry into this world. It's very high in sugar, but it's delicious. Mm-hmm. I mean, to me, this is a good 90, 91 pointer Ooh. just on... Hit some of the chocolate. Go yeah? Here. It's a little sourer after you do that. Yeah, this is this is a good entry entry level 
beer for people who are looking to get into something. This is great for, you know, guys, you're going out with your girlfriend, your girlfriend doesn't really like to drink. This is the beer to get them because it's nice and it's lots of berry fruit. They make a peach, they make a apple, they make a um, cassis as well. That tastes like a classic, you know, mm -hmm. French candy, right? Like chocolate covered raspberries. Um, good stuff. Um, good episode. I want to go back to uh, the first one real quick just because I really liked it. And I think after the sugar and the sweets, this can get real sour up in this piece. Yeah. Hand me off with some of that. Go. You take that. Yeah. It's my favorite one. I just love it. It's so real. Yeah. Do not serve cold, huh? Uh, serve cold, but not not refrigerator temperature. Yeah, that's a big thing. A lot of people, yeah. you know, chilled. Slightly yeah, chilled. Chilled. Um, white wine temperatures. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, not again. You mean room not temperature. No. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's my thing. Um, uh, you don't want to do room temperature on these things because they're living active things, and if we brought it up to room temperature, some people watching on Ustream asked before why I moved things back where I took the beer before. I put it back in the fridge because if it got too warm, it would just start spraying up out of here in a nice little Mentos and soda kind of shower type situation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In the shower? Is that what's going on there? All right. Anyway, question of the day. Alec, fire away. How am I doing? Oh! In the words of the great Edge Koch, how am I doing? That's good Did you stuff. like the show? I, that was good. I mean, I like that. Yeah. I like it. What about this? What about this? I, I thought style. I'd bring. I thought I'd bring a little element of class and style. I thought I'd you know. Which the show desperately needs. So good thinking. Uh, you know, just a just a little bit of a. It's pretty. Looking a little nicer. Yeah, I you know. Do you rock I like them often? I do. Just not in the summertime as often. But it's a beautiful like sixty low seventy degree day outside, and I figure, why not? Beers mostly ran in the nineties. Argyle Alec. I thought he was in the seventies today. We'll see what they read him. Uh, you. <laughs> With a little bit of me and guys like this, we're changing the beer world, huh? Yeah. We're changing the beer world. 